Hello everyone, Scotty here from a Blue Coconut family and welcome back to City Skylines. Today we're going to be continuing our look at the Disasters mod, or Disasters DLC, not mod. So today we're going to be looking at shelters. Now if you watched my previous video with farming, I did explain that I needed the farm for something. The thing I needed it for is the shelters and I'll explain why when I get to it. Okay. So of course with all disasters, they are underneath the disaster section in emergency services and disaster services. Okay, So there are four items uh, for the um, shelters. There is the small shelter, there is the large shelter, and then there is a small radio mast and a large tall radio mast. Okay, So I'll explain what these technically two sets of items do. So the radio mast broadcasts your signal to the system to say you must now take shelter. The shelter is where they go when they hear the broadcast. It makes sense. Okay. So I'll explain the difference. So the large shelter can take 10,000 people. The small shelter can take 1,000 people. It's very important to know that. Okay. So they also contain different bus amounts. The small one has five buses in it. The large one has ten. Okay. Now what the bus does, the bus goes out and collects people and you can actually create a route for the bus, which is quite cool. The radio mast has different um, ranges. So the small mast is a decent size. The large one is huge. And is the large one I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place down the large one here. And you can see that it will reach all of my city very nicely. And everyone will be able to hear my broadcast. So it does require power, which I will feed it some. Like there. There you go. It now has power. Like okay, so that's great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my um, shelters. So for my industrial area, because I'm not expecting many people to be here at work if a disaster hits, I'm just going to have two small shelters. One in the middle here, and one over here. Okay, so two on opposite ends. So that should help make those guys nice and safe. Okay. Then for my main city, I'm going to have two large ones, because it's better to have... Um, it's better, as I discovered, to have large ones with... Spare, uh, spare space than one that is difficult for people to get to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one over here in that bit of the city and one, one over here. Now, but bear in mind these guys are lengthways, okay, and that's quite difficult to fit them in sometimes. So I'm actually going to go there. Perfect. Okay, that's two. And then on this side, I'm just going to have a single one right in the center, I think, about there. Perfect. Now, one very important thing with these guys, and the reason why I needed the farm, is because these require food. Okay? So where is it? There is. So you can see it starts off with full amount of food, and it gets built up. Now, these ones in the industrial area, these are very good, because obviously they're right on top of the food supplies. And so things will be delivered to it. And you can see things being delivered to it via this uh, thing. But at the moment, there's nothing being delivered to it because it doesn't need it. Let's have a look at some of the other ones. Um, here we so you can see it is low on food. So we can see from here the brown lines are where the food's coming in. So there's food coming in from external, and there's a food truck coming here. So we follow this food truck. Now obviously the shelter is only as efficient as its food source, so if it runs out of food it can't hold anybody. So you need to make sure that it has food in it in order to sustain people in, inside it. That kind of makes sense. So you can see this food truck coming in here and that should boost up the food nicely. 20%. So each truck is 20% and it will continue to use food because people come by if they need a shelter, if they're homeless or something like that, they'll come by and collect some food from it. It's only right. Um, so we, we, you do need a lot 
of trucks and stuff coming in. There's another truck coming in right now. Um, so yeah, they do require a lot of food. And see how this one's doing. This one's out of food, but this one is getting tr tr some trucks being delivered to it. Yeah, so we got I think, two trucks on the way. Now, that does require an issue. This one, there's no way for food to get it. So we need a way of getting food over to this part of the island. So how do we do that? We're going to build a cargo train terminal. Okay. So we're going to build it over here, I think. That'd be good. Uh, let's actually uh, let's have a look. This thing works logically. No, over here is good actually. Yeah, over here. Okay, and then we need to build another one over in this section somewhere. That would make sense. And then link them up. We do not. We don't do um, uh, links. These don't do um, uh, what they called uh, routes. That you just link the two up, and they should then talk to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this because they are on different routes. Of course, they need to talk to each other by that. And then it's going to come here. It's going to actually split off. Can I do that on the bridge? I think I can. Should be able to. Maybe it's not there on the bridge. It does there. Uh, oh, it's because it's on top of the. Come on, find the route. I have to do it like this. That's okay. Like that. Okay, so that now needs water and power. Water and power. So now that what that does is that should allow a uh, a link uh, of trains from here to go to the other one and to be able to link a, a train here, there we go, follow this one, and this will take food to the other island. In theory I should have done this as, my, as a separate tutorial and I might still do a separate tutorial but it's, I'm going to, for this, this time it's going to be included in this one. It gets unloaded and everything comes out. And we can see if things are coming to here, which they're not at the moment, but that's okay. So that's the shelters. Obviously this one is still gaining food, this one is out of food at the moment, but that's why you need a good infrastructure of food coming in to be able to support it. I'm actually going to, at some point over break, I'm going to improve that junction to make it more efficient. But yes, so how do you initiate an evacuation if you need to. Obviously that's a very key part and you need to keep that in mind if you need to. So for just this one we're going to do a scenario where we're going to evacuate people to this. So it's either a button on the shelter or up here you've got a button here that it says release all from the shelter um, but you can also do it where that will say evacuate and evacuate the whole city. Is anybody coming to this no, I don't think so. Nobody is in work. No, that's fine. So we're going to click the evacuate all. So that has sent out the thing for everybody to evacuate. I can see that people are now travelling to the evacuation point. Now, so it's got, yeah, see, so jumping up massively. People should be coming to this one as well. Yep, there you go. And this one. Yep, people are coming to it. There you go, guys. So that's how you build shelters. And what these help do is these don't um, kind of reduce the amount of uh, damage from a disaster, it helps keep your citizens alive 
and that's the key thing because it takes a long time to build up your citizen population uh, and so if you have your citizens dead obviously you lose tax and you could lose money and of course that makes you bankrupt so what it does is it helps keep them alive now a couple of things to note while your citizens are in the shelter they do not pay tax so you actually start to lose money very quickly the other thing is if their house is destroyed while they are in the shelter obviously they don't have a home to go back to when you release it and so they'll stay in the shelter until a new house is built for them to move into so you may have a, a massive increase of property while um, you're releasing them because of course they need to go back to a home and if it's destroyed they'll wait for the house to be rebuilt for them to move back into okay so that's pretty much it for the shelters guys uh, any problems or queries, pop them into the description below and I'll see if I can reply back to them. But yes, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos in the series, and I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. Bye guys!